Hello everyone, Madhusudan Raj. Uh, today, 13 September 2012, and I am here in front of you to discuss few things which uh, happened last week. You know, I want to discuss two major uh, uh, incidents. One, uh, Manmohan Singh's uh, talk about this LPG cylinder subsidies to poor people and the other issue is Sachin Tendulkar, the famous Indian cricketer, uh, writing a letter to the uh, Ministry of Human Resource Development's uh, Minister Kapil Sibyl. Uh, so we will analyze these two uh, letters, these two events one by one. Let us begin first with what Manmohan Singh uh, is saying. You know, you know that. Uh, uh, the oil companies have increased the price of uh, oil and uh, the petroleum minister has now decided to increase the uh, rate price of uh, home gas cylinder or home cooking gas cylinder LPG uh, gas cylinders to you know they have restricted the subsidized gas number only to six cylinders uh, per year and uh, extra cylinders from uh, six cylinder onwards you will have to pay uh, almost double of what you're paying for your subsidized gas cylinder so it is like if you're paying something like 400 right now the non-subsidized gas cylinder will be will be costing you more than 800 rupees now so Manmohan Singh said that he is worried uh, that poor people who are also uh, using this LPG gas cylinder in uh, villages, uh, rural areas of India, how they are going to afford this thing. So Manmohan Singh uh, was making an inaugural address at the International Seminar on Energy Access in uh, Bangalore. And at that uh, international seminar, uh, he said something which uh, again proves that I think he has forgot forgotten his economics. So what he said that uh, his goals are very, very benevolent and goals are very good because he's an economist uh, professionally. Uh, he holds a PhD uh, in economics. So he said that his goal is uh, government's grand plan is to provide energy to all. And then once uh, uh, he stated this goal, then the kind of policy which he prescribes are absolutely contradicting to this goal. He's saying that uh, how he's going to provide this energy to all. He's saying that uh, we we are going to give a uh, lot of you know subsidy. Basically, they are going to transfer. Uh, the subsidy amount into this poor people's bank accounts and, and that is how he is going to provide energy energy to those poor people and that is how he is thinking that he is going to provide energy for all. So what is the problem over here? The problem is that providing this free money, this subsidized money and you know just writing blank checks you know uh, in the you know, and dropping those checks in the bank accounts of poor people is not going to result into their consumption of more gas, you know, cylinders or you know, consumption of gas. Actually, uh, if we talk about the country as a whole, then what's going to happen is this kind of free money is only inflation, and it is only going to push up the energy prices further. Maybe right now the prices are capped by the government administered prices, so that's why. But the real cost is right now also very high, and that is the reason why you see this kind of jump in prices straight away from 400 to 800. You know, uh, you know, in last years they did not allow this price to go up, and they kept on giving the subsidies, which is now creating a lot of you know uh, fiscal burden for the federal government there. Fiscal deficit is widening, and the credit rating agencies like S and P they are threatening uh, for a downgrade, and that is the reason why the government is scrambling for all this kind of uh, all kind of crazy steps. But as I said, uh, giving this subsidy to poor people is not going to result into higher consumption because 
as I am saying since quite long in all my video blogs that is the major theme of my analysis right now is that the real wealth is a production of real economic goods so if you are going to increase people's consumption their standard of living then you will have to produce more gas first, you know, more LPG, more petrol, more diesel, more CNG gas without the increase in the production of all these you know energy items, all these you know oil products consumption is not going to increase by giving free money to anyone what you are doing is only you know probably it is going to result into higher prices if it is in the market and if the prices are artificially kept lower by giving this so called you know by the administered price regime then you are only going to you know redistribute the total available supply of gas from one segment of the society to the other segment of the society so if poor people are going to consume one cylinder because they have this free subsidize money in their bank account then somebody else in maybe in urban area is not going to receive this one cylinder because that cylinder is taken from that urban dweller and that cylinder is now going to the consumption of this rural poor so if somebody is becoming slightly richer the other guy is becoming poorer now I understand that poor people are, you know, I'm not going into the inequality and everything, but this inequality is also a creation of government's policy. As I said, if they free the energy market and if they free the Indian economy from government's stranglehold, different kind of controls, controls and regulations, then now production of all kind of, you know, economic goods will rise, including the energy products, and nobody will have to you know redistribute anything this transfer will stop the overall stock you know of all these energy products will rise and you don't have to take away one cylinder from the urban dweller and then give that cylinder to this rural person both people can enjoy now <coughs> more you know energy products they can use you know let's say extra two cylinders you know you don't have to take it away from somebody and give it to somebody else so giving this subsidy to poor people is not going to result into fulfillment of this government's grand plan of providing energy for all. To provide energy to all, you have to free the energy market, you have to free the markets overall. Government will have to go back, it ha they have to roll back and stop existing as I'm saying since quite long time. Only then the production will increase and that is real wealth and then only people can consume more energy and more more so you know more of the all of the different kind of economic goods so Manmohan Singh I think uh, he has forgotten his economics so maybe his his economics is wrong to begin with so, and, and that is the reason why he's thinking that giving this free money to poor people is going to result into higher consumption of you know this uh, cooking gas or you know, other energy products so printing money is not going to you know create any kind of wealth for anyone printing money is only going to result into reduced purchasing power of already circulating you know currency uh, coins and notes so it's gonna buy less now it's not gonna buy more that's inflation and from the other side it is price rise so it's going to create more of the, more of a volatility, and this this is again going to widen the fiscal deficit of government. So in future, uh, we are going to face these economic problems. I'm sure some kind of you know all these creating uh, uh, credit rating agencies are also fooling people. You know all these governments are already insolvent, and they cannot uh, you know honor uh, uh, honor their promises. They're already not honoring anybody's promises. So. They are also playing the game because they are part of the part of the system. So, anyways, you know, so this is the main issue over here that printing money is not going to result into higher consumption of you know energy products. To provide energy to all, you'll have to produce more energy first, and for that, you require free market capitalism overall. Okay, I say the second issue which I want to dwell upon today is Sachin Tendulkar's letter to the Ministry of Human Resource Development 
Uh, you all know that Sachin Tendulkar is now member of uh, Rajya Sabha. He became a politician now. And uh, immediately after becoming politician, he has started, uh, you know, acting like a politician. Obviously, you know. Uh, so what he say? What he did is he sent one letter to uh, uh, Ministry of Human Resource Development, uh, Kapil Sibyl, uh, explaining his plans of developing, of integrating sports with the education system in India. <coughs> Most importantly for us, what Tendulkar said is that the letter also mentioned that sports should be made a compulsory activity in India's education system. You see, the problem here is this only. That the moment you become a politician, you think that you can enforce your own, you know, wins, your own ideas on other people, which is morally and legally you know not in the present legal system but if you have a proper logical rational practical logical legal system a libertarian legal system then in that system this kind of things are legally also wrong there's a legal offense but even in this system this is moral offense of what Tindulkar is basically saying is that he because he thinks that you know sport you know is very important so that's why he is asking the government to force uh, this idea of his that sports is very important so everybody should be involved and every children should be playing sports so his idea he is imposing on other children via state that is absolutely wrong for such Tendulkar to do he has no moral right whatsoever to force other parents children to play sports compulsorily if he's very much worried about you know sports and its decline and not not importance then he can go and educate parents that you should you know emphasize and you should you know allow your children to play different kind of sports and he should use voluntary ways of persuading the parents that they they allow their children to play sport instead of forcing these parents you know whose children are studying into all these millions of school via this state so he's writing that it, you should make it compulsory and as i said this is this is morally offensible and this is absolutely wrong for such intentions he's a big hero of everybody i know that many people are even supporting his idea that yes yes you should make this thing compulsory that is because in this country people have you know no no coherent idea of you know concept like liberty and individual choice so people think that yeah it's okay to you know force somebody to act against their will even if they don't want to do that but as i said this is absolutely wrong and this kind of things result into all kind of mess in our society the conflict which we see in our society is because some small group of people are trying to enforce their own ideas because they think that other other people are foolish and and other people cannot think on their own and all these people you know and they think that they are the elites and they have better ideas for our lives so you know i, I see that this kind of you know psychopathic sociopathic brains are ruling over us and and trying to nudge us into this and that direction they think that we are old automations and we are kind of pawns on the chessboard and they can just move us around in whatever way they want to and uh, they don't they don't understand that all the, all these individuals are having their own lives and they have their own wishes so as i said it is absolutely wrong for such intentional to you know write this kind of letter my my you know advice to Sachin Tendulkar is that you simply resign from whatever Rajas about whatever and stop thinking that by being in government you can do some kind of good to the society you stop stop acting like like a useful idiot you know in political you know you know science there is this jargon called useful useful idiot you know because people like Sachin Tendulkar they think that the the governmental the political way is the right way of doing something good for the society and they sincerely believe that I know I don't have any I don't have any <coughs> doubt that Sachin Tendulkar is not very honest in his efforts he's honest but his honesty is not good enough because the ways which he is selecting are wrong so even if you're honest doesn't mean that you can force your ideas on somebody let the let the individual parent decide whether they want some kind of sport for their children or not it is none of your business to go and force your ideas 
So I wish that Sachin Tendulkar could take some kind of you know uh, things very coolly and calmly about all these issues and and then he resigns from Rajya Sabha. If he's going to be in politics, and I'm sure that he's going to waste whatever talent he's having. Uh, you know, apart from cricket, I don't know what kind of talent he's having. You know, apart from cricket. But you know, he must understand that this is wrong. And as I said, what, what, you know, how Sachin Tendulkar himself would feel uh, if he, when he was a student, that somebody else, you know, uh, thought from that they want to impose their own ideas that everybody should stop playing cricket compulsorily and everybody should become doctor compulsorily. So Sachin Tendulkar can understand that he, he would have never become a cricketer if that kind of policy were in place when he was in school. Just imagine somebody forcing Sachin Tendulkar to become a doctor against his own will. Will he able to become one? No, he is a cricketer. So in the same way, children, all children are having individual personalities. So not every, you know, sports are, you know, sports are not for everyone. You know, for example, when I was a kid, I never liked any kind of sport. So why should I I play any kind of sport? I want to be in the library. I want to read books. I don't do, I don't want to waste my time in the playground. So I think this kind of serious issues, Sachin Tendulkar must understand, think through, and stop doing all this kind of you know nonsense and resign from Rajya Sabha. All right. So these are the two issues which I wanted to discuss with you today. And as I said, uh, nothing much is changing. The Indian economy is slowing down and it's gonna slow down uh, on 30th September RBI is going to come out with their review of monetary policy let's see what they're doing because inflation is not slowing down so I'm thinking that they are going to probably keep the rates steady but one day they will have to bring it down otherwise you know because that's the only thing they need you know they uh, they know how to you know do that's the only policy they are having so uh, inflation is not going to come down and the same situation is going to continue. So you you guys, you know, stay safe over there. I'll see you next week. Thank you very much for watching me and goodbye.